Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on our master budget and we will be working on the direct labor budget at this time. So remember what we have done so far, we have to start off in this way. We did the sales budget in order to know what we're going to sell. We have to, we sell. <laughs> we have to do that first. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. And then we did the production budget in, term in terms of how much uh, units we're going to need to produce based on the sales budget then we did the raw materials budget we need to do uh, these two budgets the production budget before we do the raw materials budget and now we're going to work on the direct labor uh, budget notice of course we don't really need to do the raw materials before the uh, labor budget but we do however need to do the sales budget and the production budget in order to determine how much labor it's going to uh, we will need in order to uh, fulfill our obligations in the budgeting process. The direct labor is a little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward to my mind. So this is how we're going to take a look at that. We're going to start off with a similar area that we started off the materials budget, which would be that we need to have know how many units we're going to produce. Then we can see how many hours it's going to take to produce them. And then we can estimate how much it's going to cost per hour in order to produce these. So where are we going to get the production in units? Well, that's going to equal in July the number that we uh, determine in the production budget. So remember, the production budget tells us how many units we actually need, need to produce. And it's not equivalent to the units that we will uh, we think that we're going to sell because we had to go through this process to determine how many units we need to produce. And we came up with this 19586 for July. And that's where we're going to start for the direct labor budget for July. And we're going to do that same process. I could copy it across, but I'm going to just point to it for August so that we could see exactly where it's coming from a few different times. So it's going to be coming from the production budget for August in this case. I'm going to hit tab. So there's that number, the 20,000. And then in September, the production, uh, the direct labor budget, we're taking this number from the production budget being the 20,500 units that we will be producing. Then, of course, what are we going to need to know in order to determine our budget for labor? We're going to need how many hours does it take to create one unit? And note that uh, there are some conversion problems. Sometimes we pay people generally hourly. If a problem gives you minutes, <laughs> then uh, you're going to have to convert to hours most likely. And note that that conversion can be a little bit trickier than you would think because, uh, you know, there's 60 minutes in an hour and whatnot. So just if you if your problem happens to have minutes in it and doesn't give you hours but gives you an hourly rate, just make sure that you're going to have to perform that conversion. Here we're saying that the uh, labor hours required to finish a, a unit are 0.5 or half an hour. So it's going to take 0.5 uh, hours to make uh, a unit and therefore we're just going to say 0.5 here and 0.5 and 0.5. That's how many, that's how much time it's going to take uh, in order to create, uh, make the units. Therefore, we're going to take the 19,586 times the 0.5 and enter. So that means that it's going to take 
9,793. Now, again, you might want to ask, well, where are they going to come up with the 0.5? Obviously, a problem like this would have to give you the 0.5. Uh, in real life, we would come up with, with some type of estimates on how long it would take to create one individual unit. And I, and there's going to be different theories on terms of how we'll come up with that number at, at a later time. Um, but a problem like this will generally give you that number. So we'll multiply that out for August. This is how many uh, units we need to produce times. It's going to take 0.5 hours per unit and tab. And then for September, we're going to take 20,500. Uh, units times 0.5 per unit. So we now have the number of hours it's going to take for July, August, and September, and then we're going to multiply that times the labor rate. Once again, the, the problem is going to have to give you a labor rate here. We're going to say it's $14 according to the problem, 14. And once again, in real life, of course, we'd have to come up with the labor rate in some way as well, and it might have to be some type of estimate. So we're going to say it's going to cost us uh, on this estimation $14 per hour. So 14 and 14. Once again, remember that when we think about a, a problem like this, we usually are going to be given the uh, rate in hours. So if, if again, if, you, if it's a problem that's given you how many minutes it takes to do a certain task, you're going to have to do some type of conversion, most likely. And that will give us our labor in dollars. So that means that if we if it's going to take 9,793 hours, then we're going to multiply that times $14 per hour to give us the uh, dollar amount of 137.99. Same thing for August. We're going to say it's going to take 10,000 hours times $14 per hour means we have 140,000. We could copy this formula across. I'm just going to do it a few times just to get the calculation of the formula in. This equals the 10,290 times the dollars per uh, hour. And we could sum them up uh, two different ways here. I'm going to sum up the total hours for the quarter equals the sum of the total hours for the quarter for July, August, and September. And that'll give us 30,043 uh, hours for the quarter. If we multiply those hours times, of course, the rate per hour, the budget for the quarter in dollars, 420599 that should tie out if we add up the dollar amount for July, August and September which is 420599. So now we can continue on to the factory overhead budget and the factory overhead budget is usually pretty straightforward in a master budget such as this. So we'll go through this fairly quickly. Uh, there's going to be two ty types of the overhead. We got the variable and the fixed portion. Uh, in order to calculate the variable portion, oftentimes we're going to have some added information such as a, a very variable factory overhead rate. So in this case, if we take a look at our inf information, we have a predetermined variable overhead rate per labor hour. So remember what that means is that we're basically using the labor in order to help us to allocate the uh, overhead. So that's going to be some kind of averaging method for us to allocate the overhead. We'll talk about how we come up with that number at, at a later time. In a master budget like this, they're going to have to give us some format in which we will allocate uh, the, the, the overhead. And so in this case, we have a variable portion, which is going to be the 2.6 times the um, labor hours. And then we're also going to have a fixed portion, in this case, just being the depreciation of the 21000 That one's not going to change. It's going to be fixed, same rate over each month. So in order to, to work this problem, we're going to have the total labor hours needed because that's our base on which we're going to allocate the variable portion. And so we're going to, we're going to get that from the uh, direct labor budget where we just calculated that. And so we have the 97, uh, 9,793 for July and August. And you can copy this across, of course, but I'm just going to do it three times so we can see exactly where it's coming from. August, we got it that 10,000 and September equals the 10,250. So those are the total uh, direct total labor hours needed per month. And then we're going to multiply that times the variable factory overhead rate, which is given to us in the problem. So here it's given at uh, 2.6. So we're going to say 2.6, and that's going to be all the way across this, uh, our dollars that we're basically going to allocate. Now, I want to point out here that that 2.6 does not mean 2.6 per hour as if we're paying it in wages. This, this, although we're using labor hours, the 2.6 is allocating overhead. Labor is just a way that we're going to use to allocate the overhead. 
So if we multiply that out, then we're going to say that this equals for July the uh, total labor hours times the factory overhead rate. It's the predetermined factory overhead rate. And then in uh, August, we have the number of labor hours times the predetermined factory overhead rate. Yes, you could copy this across, but I'm just going to do the calculation so we can see it three times. September times the predetermined overhead rate. And then we could total this up. We could equal the sum of the variable overhead for July, August, and September. All right, then we're going to have the budgeted fixed overhead. And in this problem, the fixed overhead is just going to be this 20, 21,000 of depreciation. So that's going to be straightforward. Fixed, fixed costs are pretty easy for us to budget for. They're going to be the same each month. So that's pretty easy for us. So we're just going to say, all right, that's 21,000 per month. We know it's the depreciation. It looks like it's a straight line depreciation. So 21,000 each month, we're going to sum that up equals the sum of for the quarter of July, August, September, third quarter, we have the 63. So then if we add that up, that'll give us the total overhead for July. So this equals the variable portion plus the fixed portion will give us the total of 46,461 for July, August. Yes, you can copy this across, but I'm going to do it just so we can see it a few times. We've got the variable portion plus the fixed portion. And then, ooh, not times, not times. Delete equals the variable portion plus the fixed portion tab. And then uh, we have the September variable portion plus fixed portion tab. And once again, we should be able to do this two different ways. We could do the same calculation, the variable portion for the quarter plus the fixed portion for the quarter. Or we can add up July, August, and September quarters for the same 141, 111 in the formula bar here.